Now in the many tributes to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth. Four days after her death and her coffin is now on its way to London and people lined the streets in Edinburgh, Scotland as her coffin made its way from Balmoral Castle through the city on its days long trip to the capital. Eyewitness News anchor Shirlene Alicott is in London and has the latest on the day's events. Good evening, Joe, outside Buckingham Palace tonight the third night of mourning. Today, the public got to see the casket for the very first time as the motorcade carrying the queen began the journey to London. The procession escorting the coffin of Queen Elizabeth passed through the gates of Balmoral Castle for one final time. The beginning of a six hour journey which would wind through the cities and villages of Scotland. People of all ages line the roads including these Scottish farmers and tractors, there to pay their respects and say farewell to their queen, the only monarch most of them have ever known. Being a woman and being a queen, we're not going to see that for the next three generations, and it means a lot. She was our queen, and just really wanted to come, just to say our goodbyes. I think it was a great show of respect for coming through today. Um, she's much loved in this area. The motorcade ending at Holyrood House Palace in Edinburgh. And in a poignant moment, Princess Anne curtsies as her mother's casket is carried into the throne room. This time of mourning, also a time of transition. Her eldest son, Charles, proclaimed king throughout the rest of the United Kingdom, similar to the ceremony held yesterday in England. Tomorrow morning, the king and the queen consort will travel to Edinburgh. A service for Queen Elizabeth will be held at a cathedral. Her coffin will remain there for 24 hours to give the people of Scotland one last chance to say farewell. The coffin will be flown to London on Tuesday, and the queen will lie in state at Westminster Hall from Wednesday until the day of her funeral, a week from tomorrow. And today, as we mark the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, we want to take a look back at what the Queen did to show her support during that harrowing time. The Queen breaking a 600-year tradition by ordering her Coldstream guards to play the Star Spangled Banner. More than 3,000 people watched the emotional ceremony at Buckingham Palace. In 2010, on the ninth anniversary of the attacks, the Queen herself visited the September 11th memorial at Ground Zero. And just last year, Joe, she did it again. She ordered that the Star Spangled Banner be played in remembrance of the 20th anniversary. And that is just one of many instances that the Queen has tried to show that she is a friend to the United States and an ally. In London, I'm Shirlene Alicott. Back to you, Joe. All right, Shirlene, thank you. Crowds gathered outside Buckingham Palace once again, this time welcoming the new king. Ever since the queen's death, people have come to the palace gates to pay their respects and remember the longest reigning monarch. Many travel from distant points across the globe. Our own Nina Pineda joins us live tonight from Green Park near the palace. Nina. Joe, good evening. This is the park where all the overflow of flowers are being brought, and there is just such a sense of, of calm and respect and reverence. I mean, take a look behind me. As far as the eye can see, people are just taking their time to read. There are stuffed animals and, and candles, and there's, there's notes in different languages. You know, from such a diverse group of people, London is very ethnically diverse, and they're all united in the sorrow for the loss of their sovereign. They cannot wave for the chance to say their final goodbyes this week. Along the route where the Queen's funeral cortege will travel, barricades are being placed in anticipation of the crowds which will gather to catch a glimpse of the sovereign's coffin. That she ruled for 70 years, I think that, is, that itself is very admirable. She's basically the only monarch I've known. Elizabeth II was the head of a commonwealth comprised of dozens of member nations. King Charles received state dignitaries at Buckingham Palace in what will be his new role. During his mother's reign, she visited an astonishing 117 countries all around the globe. 23 times she came to Canada from 1951 on. Uh, oh, we loved her. We always had a picture of the Queen in our house. Around London at Big Ben. Queen Elizabeth and uh, King Charles. At local pubs. Flag for the Queen. And at souvenir stands, people showed and shared their sentiments. I like the Queen. 
is very important for England. The Queen gets credit for modernizing the monarchy. Those from the 14 nations in the UK's realm respect her for many reasons. She gave countries the opportunities to be independent. I can see them moving away from monarchism, going towards more of uh, democracy and all. Bouquets are being brought to local parks by the truckload. Each one lovingly unwrapped and arranged. We're taking the utmost care with these flowers because, you know, they're, they're not just flowers, it's, you know, it's, it's what it means. Back now here live in London, you can see the workers here in their orange vests as they create these, these gardens. They really are just taking such care, such meticulous care uh, to do this for their queen. And, and, and I love that these, these letters and these notes, um, so many children, these are about to be placed, left these great drawings. And many of them say a simply just two words, Joe, simply to their queen, thank you.